that means order and we'll start off the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> A small project NACC number 178 730 Winter Street. This is to add pervious pavers to an existing driveway. You approved um, pervious pavers under a small project to the come on in to the first part of the driveway heading to the road to sort of an entrance apron which was a smaller area the um, they now want to do the rest of the driveway in the pervious pavers there is a uh, exemption or under the wetlands protection act 10.022 b2 looks like Q um, for repair or replacement of an existing driveway so this is falls under that um, you also have a uh, detail of the porous pavers and the base on which they put those so Heidi Heidi did the review on this one and she recommends approving as a small project L with erosion controls and pre and post construction inspection is there anyone present for this hearing you guys want to come up so they can ask you any Will the, uh, will the work that you're proposing cause any t type of deep excavation that would uh, destabilize the soils? No, it should not. Uh, we did the first third of the driveway last year under small projects, and we didn't see anything like that. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. So it's actually very encouraging to have people come in in phases and want to do more. So you're finding them to be successful? They're actually very good. Uh, as a matter of fact, I snow blow that driveway, and the snow actually melts directly through these pavers, and the snow melts off of them quicker than the asphalt that we're replacing. So I think it's a it's a dual benefit, if you will. It's a great testimony. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All set. That, no questions. Motion. Uh, I move that we consider the application NACC 178 to be a small project and lawfully under the letter L. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Actions. So uh, accordingly, I move that we approve NACC number 178 as small project letter L. Second. Uh, that's with pre and post and erosion control? As amended. All those in favor say aye. Aye. I'm opposed to national animals. Well said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next one is 505 Sutton Street. Uh, Mr. McKenzie will have to take over. Oh, wait. 505 is next? or? 505 Sutton Street. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought Old Farm was next. It was an Old Farm. I'll be happy to. Uh, is this already open? Does this uh, no. Nope, this is new. Well, this, this is, is a, uh, a new, okay. And we've dispensed with the readings, correct? Yes. Okay, very good. Jen? Yep. Would you so. bring us up to speed on what this is? Yep. So, for those of you not familiar with the site, this is the Knights of Columbus. Is that what it's, or was the Knights of Columbus, I think? <laughs> it hasn't been for, right. It's next to the China Blossom. Right. Okay. Um, so, I've been out to this, this site. Uh, to review there are actually no wetlands on the site proper that's why this is filed as an RDA because there's technically nothing to delineate um, there was some standing water observed off-site and so without having property access that um, I'll let uh, the presenter give you more details but basically 
there is no wetland on site, so this isn't an ANRAD per se, but uh, since there is some off site buffer zone on the site, um, I, it has been reviewed. We've walked the whole perimeter and um, I'll move to you. Sure. Uh, I'm Rich Kirby from LEC Environmental. Good evening. With me tonight from uh, Sutton Street Redevelopment is Eric Roth. And uh, we did file this RDA application with the commission to confirm that the property contains no wetland resource areas um, under the act of the bylaw. Uh, the property is behind or next to the, the China Blossom uh, across the street from the Lawrence Municipal Airport. And uh, the front of the property <clears throat> along Sutton Street has an existing structure surrounded by paved park parking area, uh, lawn and landscaped areas, and then some forested areas to the rear or along the, uh, the southern uh, portion of the site. Um, behind the property to the south are some uh, residential houses uh, associated with Surrey Street. And um, during our inspections, we were out there in April and August of this year. And in April, we did see a small pocket of standing water um, south of the property on the, uh, I believe it's the 67 Surrey Street property. Um, <clears throat> and that was viewed from the property. Um, it's at the base of a relatively steep slope. And uh, we saw some red maple, uh, poison ivy, European buckthorn, all facultative plants, and a few couple inches of standing water. Um, <clears throat> after meeting with Ms. Hughes on the property, she forwarded us a, uh, a delineation for the property to the south east which is six, six, 67 Surrey Drive uh, which showed a discrete bordering vegetated wetland so that didn't connect or approach this area that we saw off-site But somewhere in that time frame, we were aware that there had been a filing. I thought it may be the wetland that they had observed, but it's not. It's farther away. And, and because of that, <clears throat> and based on our observations from the subject property, we came to the conclusion that uh, it must be, if it is a wetland, it must be an isolated wetland. Um, so as a result, we took some field estimates, really just viewing. Um, we had the, the southern property boundary staked in the field. And we estimated the distance between that southern property boundary and the toe of slope where this uh, standing water began um, and showed an approximate location of this off-site wetland and then showed the 25, 50, and 100-foot buffer zones extending from it. Um, <clears throat> we provided data in the, in the request for determination regarding the upland soil conditions and um, predominantly upland vegetation within the remaining vegetated portions of the site and included a data sheet for an area just um, off the southwestern corner of the parking lot where you had a 50-50 mix of wetland and upland plants, but the soils keyed out to be non-hydric. So basically what we're asking for is a, a negative determination um, confirming that the, uh, that the site doesn't ha contain any wetland resource areas and the, the limit of jurisdiction really is that buffer zone as it extends from, from an off-site wetland to the south. No works proposed under the RDA. Really, the focus is to just establish the commission's jurisdiction, so that way uh, Eric can um, move forward with with the design team and come up with uh, you know site development. And to the extent we're in the buffer zone, obviously we'll have to come back to the commission with a notice of intent. Um, we'll have to re-notify the uh, the neighbors, but that's really the the point of all this. Jen, do you recommend the negative determination? Yes, even when I was out there, there was no water in the isolated depression. Um, I did observe the area, but um, we didn't go on to the site because we didn't have permission. So it's just observational at this point. Yeah. Thank you. Losing a butter, so. Um, I can't really don't have any questions. I mean, the reality is, is you've canvassed. They've canvassed the, the site. You've no, confirmed it. There's nothing on site. Right. You're ranging off to find stuff off site, and and 
the best you can do is get an approximation. Is, is the is the buffer zone line to that offsite stuff estimated offsite? Yes. Is really the resource is just buffer zone. Buffer zone and only local and, jurisdiction right. because it would be isolated. Okay, I'm all set. I guess I'm a little bit confused. Why, why bother going through this anyway? Well, I think the point of it. If there's a wetland op, my, let me finish. Let me uh, just get my thoughts out for, for all my benefit and yours. Uh, if there's a wetland off site, <coughs> I obviously you didn't go and ask the people, can we go on your property to define a wetlands or to check further? Uh, you didn't do that. So uh, you're guessing as to. What kind of a wetland it is, whether it's local jurisdiction or further, and it, and where the buffer zones to it might be. It's clearly local. There's nothing on either side of this, and without <coughs> digging in the soil. And, and the buffer zones he shows here are not necessarily accurate. They're conservative, if if anything, you know. And if we if we, I mean, what you're here, you're indicating a a, a positive determination. Negative. Negative. No, it says here, I recommend you oh. showing a positive five and oh, positive five and six. six for local for, jurisdiction. For, yes. local, for yeah, local for jurisdiction, local. yes. It would be reviewable only by the commission and only under local jurisdiction if they were to proceed with a filing. I'll add a caveat to that. And then at that time, they're going to have to confirm the, the wetland boundaries. And they claim no jurisdiction on the local They still have to, well, they, they would still have to file. If the, if the Zoning Board of Appeals had jurisdiction, then they would have jurisdiction. But someone would have jurisdiction, <laughs> and it would be under the local bylaw. So that's what it, that's what the I statement is. I'm not going to speculate what it is. I mean, it could be a hevel port for the, you know. For the airport, I don't know what it is. Right, but if it's but a forty B, there's still jurisdiction under the local bylaw. It may not be regulated by the Conservation Commission, but there is still jurisdiction, without a doubt. To the extent that, that the, the zoning, zoning board, board would choose to regulate it. Just the clarification. So under 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 if it 40, were 40B. They, they're going to put this going to be a forty B project. We don't. I'm, no. I'm speculating. Not, Whoa, but, but sorry. for the record, they're not proposing any work at all of any kind. I understand at this yeah. time, but so if it's a 40 B project, the planning be. board has got discretion as whether they want to implement anything under under uh, wetlands or yes. not. Correct. The, uh, but that's the ZBA would do that, and uh, so they could ignore the conservation commission if they choose. And uh, we, we we don't know. What but they the, but it is jurisdiction under the yeah, wetlands. That's the caveat there. I was trying to point out is. There may be a future proceeding under a public hearing. There may not be. It, it doesn't matter for the RDA. For the RDA, there's Conservation Commission jurisdiction under the local bylaw. End of story. So exactly. We're speculating. Which we shouldn't be doing. We should be ruling on, on this application on its face. And and we, we shouldn't be speculating. For, uh, speculating I was offering that to the, to, to the extent that, uh, just to clarify Jen's statement, that you have a future hearing. Only, it, it, yeah. only depending on what it is that's proposed. Right. It may or may not ever come back to us. Understood. Uh, any anything else from the commission? Yeah, right now. So, Jen, be, before I recognize the butters that want to speak, can you, as a as our wetland scientist, you are our expert. We rely upon you when RDAs and and any type of delineations. We rely upon you. So, your your position as our scientist, as the town's advocate, is there are no wetlands on site. Correct. And that you you agree with the, the applicant's representative that the wetlands are off-site to the extent they exist. To the extent they exist, they are off-site. Okay. And they're and they they would only the wetlands that are off-site yeah. would only be jurisdictional under the local wetlands bylaw because Correct. they're not large enough under the Wetlands Act. Right, and they don't they're not connected to any other um, water body. Okay. During, um, during this drought air time. Yeah. You you are certain on that? I'm certain that they don't connect to any other water body. I'm, you know, again, not certain that it's jurisdictional. I didn't observe water in it. There is wetland vegetation back there. It's all facultative. Um, I we didn't couldn't dig soil. It's possible it may not be big enough to it be It may not even be a wetland, but they are being conservative in saying okay. they saw okay. the standing water. They okay. saw so the vegetation is there. We're basically going to kind of be telling them that what. This is going to be jurisdictional under the local bylaw. I, get, I and mean, you're going actually, to have to prove it in the future. We can not. we can confirm, right? So under the local bylaw, if there's vegetation and signs of hydrology, then it's a wetland. But that's as it, far it, as we it, need to go. We don't actually need to dig soil. And, to and confirm because it's, it's because it's off site, it only becomes 
relevant to the extent that, that, that whatever they propose out there, the setbacks to it. Oh, well, that's true. If, if, they, if, they meet, if, if there were a wetland offsite and we validated that it was a wetland and they propose a structure that meets the setbacks, it's a push. So we have to wait Depending and see. Depending on what they're going to build. Well, right. which again, we, we have no proposal before us. Um, can you, with your cursor, John, could you just, I mean, I, I think I can see it, the 25 and 50. It's, there's those two arcs right, right yeah, on the southerly property line. super small. See, it, it'd be down yeah. in here. Yeah. There is, a, there is a steep embankment to go down to So I'm seeing three arcs. I'm seeing one that's got a... That's the 25. That's 25. 25, yeah. What's that's the 50. And what's, and the, the what's that other one? That's the 100. 100. That's, all right. So that's the actual buffer zone. The other, those are the other no disturbs. Right. Okay. What's over there on the corner? Is that a fence or something? No, this is grading. Right here. That's a fence. Right there. It is a fence. Wood fence. Wood okay. fence. Okay. Just uh, wondering what that was. Okay. Right. So it's isolated yeah, enough right. at the property line where the reality is, is so I guess regardless of the proposal, they can stay away from it. It's in someone's lawn. Yeah. I mean, developed yard. What's the level of certainty of, of the wetland itself, the off-site wetland, being less than 5,000 square feet? What's 5,000? I mean, Isn't being a state person, it's not, it's, no, it's, I it's 1,000 feet. Yeah, 1,000 1, feet for the local. Right. Right, yeah. But we're it's, not, we're, we're this is not, we're not anywhere near, right, this is not anywhere near that size. Not even close. Not even close. As I said, I, I, I mean, you saw the standing water. I don't know how far the standing water extended on the, the times you were there, but well, I... It's, it's, it's not very big, and it very well may be less than 1,000 square feet. Um, but we're just, like Ms. Hughes indicated, we're being conservative. We want to just figure out where the jurisdiction lies so uh, my client can move forward with, uh, with planning and design. And I think it's, you know, just worth noting before you open it up to the public that we're not discussing any project. There is no project before us. All that's on as a matter of discussion is any potential jurisdiction. Oh, I, I, I understand my job. Um, I just one. I was speaking more to the audience than to you. I yeah, guess. no, that's, they're, 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 this is a sophisticated group here. They're not going to have any problem understanding. So uh, everybody sat here before we said so Any abutters that would like to ask questions or speak, just uh, step up and take a seat right where that microphone is there. And identify yourself, your name, and your address, and then ask your question. Okay, Kevin Robinson, 68 Surrey Drive. Okay, so right across the street. Um, the question I have right now is this gentleman, it sounds like they don't have any plans, but I've heard 40B mentioned twice. It, it, I want to be very, I was only doing that to clarify our administrators. But there's whispers, and I mean, now, it, now my ears are really oh, perking up. I mean, seriously. Oh, come on, no, no, no. I, again, I was saying it because. This may or may not ever get back to this commission. There'll be other boards who hear whatever might be proposed there. If this is only local bylaw and something is proposed within that area, it might come back before us. Right. No, I, I understand what you're if saying. If they stay outside just, the 100, they won't come back right. before us. It's just very coincidental that you picked 40B. You could have said a hockey rink or um, <laughs> there's a number of things you could have said, and we're concerned about well, it, and well, that's well, why well, we're well, here. With the 40B, yeah. there's jurisdictional issues. 40B is only jurisdictional to the Conservation Commission I, under I, a hearing I, if it's, right. if if it's, it's subject the to the law. Wetlands Protection Act. Right. If it's subject only to the local wetlands bylaw, there is no hearing before the wetlands. Uh, exactly. I mean, this the is commission. the only thing that can stop a 40B project is, well, is no, conservation. No, 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 Jen's statement with regards to what might or might not ever come back to us in the future, and only that. I have no idea what the proposal. Okay, it's just I, yeah. you said 40B, and that's yeah. what we're all here. No, that's what the, uh, Kevin. That's that's one of the reasons why I asked the applicant uh, if there were any plans at all uh, beyond the delineation that's before us, and the answer I heard was no, and I heard that answer from our administrator as well. So I, I'm, I'm comfortable that there's nothing filed that is. Uh, pertains to this property, other than what we have right before us right now. Okay, thank you, guys. All right, thank you, Kevin. Sir. Hi, I'm Patrick Duffy. I live at 59 Surrey Drive, which has the up. That's the one just below the yeah, circles right, yes. there. Yes. Okay. So I've, I've li been living there 15 years, and I can tell you that um, there is 
a decent amount of standing water from early in the year, often well into June. And I can show anybody that at, at the appropriate times. Nobody has come forward and asked me, you know, when's a good time to see that water. But there's a decent amount. So I'd like to make sure that those, those um, semicircles there are positioned and sized correctly to account for that standing water. Right. Um, I guess that's a question I would ask a, a scientist right here. So Mr. Duffy is... First of all, was that an indication to allow our staff on your property to delineate? At the appropriate time, yes. I mean, sometimes you can't get a good view of it. We're well, about see, to make a determination of a, of a delineation based on a, an over the so, property well, line survey. I think what he's saying it is, is it's not the appropriate time to make that determination. So you can auger into that area and determine. So they don't have to see standing water, Mr. Duffy. They, ah. could, they could come out to your site and they could auger the soil, take out a sampling and analyze it and, and determine if the soils are hydric or not hydric, and if they are, they can have a better idea of where the limits of the uh, wetland are. If you're interested in allowing them to come out and auger, they'd love to do it, I'm sure. Well, based on these numbers here, how close is the wetland to the property line? What is the distance? Okay. If I may, I think we estimated that it was about 10 feet away. And we're, the property we're 59, is, can somebody point 59 out just so I know what we're talking about? It's like, directly below a, the semicircles. Right, You're definitely that, right there. that one, yes. Okay, that's 59 there, okay. Uh, yeah, I would agree with it to be about 10 feet based on the property lines that you, that you guys lined up recently. And this is a 1 to 30 plan, so that's probably, what, 40 feet wide, maybe? 40? The, what is 40 feet wide? The, if you're saying there's a wetland that casts that buffer. Oh. The 25 looks to be about 40, 50 feet wide, maybe? Well, it's, that doesn't mean the wetland's that wide. The wetland Would really right. does come to a, a point. Right. Um, but when you, it's about, I think we estimated it was about 12 feet wide. <coughs> 12 feet wide? Yeah. So then it's deeper than it is. Well, it's, I don't, I don't know how deep it is, <clears throat> how, in, in terms of how far to the Into south the, it extends. Right. Well, you never got onto the property to be able to, to no. actually. No. So, so you're, you're making an estimation from across the Based on what we observed, so. yes. Understood. So I don't know we have an opportunity well, to have the... Well, I've, exactly. I've heard two things. Yeah. Early on, I heard the applicant's rep state how he did it. Yeah. And I heard that our agent looked over the, you know, his stuff in the field yeah. with them, well, and they, I, I they did the same sort of visual estimation. Well, that's the only thing they did. The last I heard... That it was a conservative determination. So there's a couple of th three things really can happen here, right? It's accurate. You guys were lucky by seeing what you saw. It could be bigger. You don't think that's likely, and it might very well be smaller, making this it's area non even non-jurisdictional completely. So that's what you. That's what happens when you go out and confirm it. I mean, ideally, it. it would be best to come out and look at it if you would let us on property. But my understanding at the time of the review was that we weren't allowed on property. So we, we did request permission very close. To okay. We did request permission at the time it was denied. Sure, well, understood. Um, so, so, guys, um, there's no, no objection. To, we have to do this. It, it, we have to keep order, okay? Everybody's going to get... Everybody... Everybody can speak. I just want you to do it one at a time. Mr. Duffy's got the floor right now. Yeah. If he wants to uh, yield the floor, the next person can, can no, go no, in there. I'm not in any rush. So. <laughs> yeah, I just have one last question. For the layperson, what, is an, what does the RDA mean? It's a request for determination of applicability, and it's asking us to agree with the applicant's assertion of where the wetland area is, because once that area is agreed to and locked in on a plan, it's valid for a period of five years. So three. once it's three. once we well three with some, three years and then some extensions or no? No, 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 okay. So I stand corrected. Not three years, but the point is once we vote on it and it's accepted, it is locked in for three years. So since we haven't voted on it yet, if you think that the good. result's going to be different and you want them to come out and go on your property in auger to determine exactly where it is, now's the time to do it before we vote. Uh, we'll we'll continue this for two weeks and and they'll go out and they'll do a delineation, but you'll have to let them on your property to do it. Um, that's your call. We, we don't trespass, so. So uh, what is the size of the wetland then based from this proposal? 
You said it's know. 10 feet from the property, and how wide, uh, east to west? You're saying north you think south? it comes to a point. So I didn't see the standing water, so you can right. we're, explain. We're making the, the, the vegetation is pretty thick in there, so it's difficult mm -hmm. to see yep. you know, very deep beyond you know, 10, 10, 15, 20 feet beyond the, uh, where the wetland begins. Yep. Um, we're presuming that it's greater than 1,000 square feet. It very well may be less than 1,000 square feet. We don't know. Yeah, no, we understand. But more importantly, the, the point was to establish the extent of buffer zones mm -hmm. on the property, presuming it is jurisdictional. So that's, that's where we are. So I guess, I hate to say this, but uh, you got the ball right now, sir. Um, you, you, can, uh, you can think about it a little bit, and we could take some other questions, but uh, I'll do we're going gonna to move this thing along. So think about it while okay. we're still in meeting, okay? Thank you. All right, thanks. So, so as you sit down, just name an address, have yeah, a seat, and ask sure. your question. Absolutely. Steve right. Wakelin, uh, I live at 43 Surrey Drive. It's in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, okay. We did, in fact, let people on our property. We, we were actually very nice to them. Um, they walked all around our backyard. They, they were on both sides of our fence. And I, I'm not an engineer, so I can't really read this map all that well, but it looks to me like that dotted line circle represents the wet area. It represents yeah. the buffer zones buffer from zone the wet, totally. wet area. Okay. They, they, and what they, I'm start with a, with a, with a, they go out uh, 25 feet, 50 feet, and 100 feet. Those are the three zones of jurisdiction. Okay. And, and, and what I would like to point out is if you look at 43 Surrey Drive, the top left uh, lot is my house. If you look in the upper right hand corner of my property, we have a tree that I have been trying to grow grass on that portion of our yard for for 10 years. And the standing water in our backyard every year after year after year, okay. it makes it impossible to grow grass. It is it is a backyard that is completely grassed in except for that area which is completely soil. So same question. Are people to go out there and auger or not? I, I don't have a problem with that. I, okay. But I've, again, I've already let people on our property. Yeah, but these will be ours this time. Okay. I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. My only concern, to be honest, is that if you say we'll do it in the next two weeks, I, I mean, it's if dry. you walk out and it's dry, I mean, that well, doesn't... Well, that's why they auger down. Okay. It can be dry. But, the soil, but soil have you looked change. at the Merrimack River? I mean... Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's write the same as I think... Yeah. We have a huge advantage over the public when it comes to what a wetland is. Yeah. Standing but, water does not make a wetland. I understand that. There are several factors that come sure. together that make a wetland. There's soil characteristics, vegetation, and hydrology, water. Sure. Those three things together in certain proportions and by an analysis makes an area wet or not. And then depending on the size of that area in square feet, if it exceeds a certain threshold, it could be jurisdictional under our local bylaw, mm -hmm. or if it exceeds 5,000 square feet, which is really big compared to these lots, would make it jurisdictional under the state regulations. So by virtue of there being standing water all by itself, with, not, with none of the other characteristics around, doesn't make it a wet one. Okay. So I was about to ask Jen, but you've done other corners of this project, so in other words, with the wood fences, you've gone, you've been there as part of this. We walked the whole back and you're not finding line it. again with everything dry. There's no, you know, there are things on site that made us auger and, and check for wetland. There's a whole stand of uh, was it silky dogwood, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, silky so. dogwood with, with some northern red oak. That's where we did the data sheet and included it in the RDA, and right? So, the, I mean, um, there's veg. Right. All throughout the yeah. site, but being able to dig or see hydrology is, is key too. So the, the, the last jurisdiction I mentioned, soils, hydrology, and vegetation, when you're looking at the local wetland alone, soils drop off the, the requirement. It's hydrology and vegetation alone. That's correct, right? We, we drop the, the, hydro, uh, the soils out. You, you just need two of the three. Even the, two the, the, the state, three. the state doesn't follow the Army Corps of Engineers where you have to have everything. So even the state of Massachusetts, you can have two. You can have hydrology and vegetation and, and still the have a that. Those are, right. those are cross-sectional samples and then an analysis, statistical analysis of what's out there is what makes it ultimately the wetland, and that's what we're trying to rule on. So what okay. we've debated is all of those discussions specific to the site itself was done and we didn't find anything. There's this discussion that they've engaged in and we're now hearing off-site that they visually looked across the property line and saw the vegetation. They heard testimony from the applicants, hydro, um, wetland scientists, who saw observed water. Those are the two criteria. And because of that, they made a, disc 
visual assessment and a mental evaluation of that's the area we're talking about. They got conservative, said, yeah, it's, it might be over 1,000, and if it is, that's the line. That sort of discussion didn't happen anywhere else on site, just up in this corner, correct? Although we walked the whole back property line when we were out there. <clears throat> if, if I may, the, um, the backyards of, of the properties, um, the three to the, to the mm -hmm. left of the wetland, come almost to the southern property boundary of the site. The southern property is staked, and then there's a, a topographic break of roughly two to three feet that descends from the site down to these backyards. Um, so really, there wouldn't be any vegetation to, to look at. OK. Well, I'm well, just there, I mean, I'm gonna... there is a lot of vegetation on the other side of our wooden fence. All right, so, so if it got to the point where we could get a review out there, you'd be, you'd be willing to allow it? OK. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next, next batter, please. Yeah, Dave, 67 Surrey Drive. What, what's your last name, sir? Small line. Okay. I had a um, pulled a permit 10 years ago to put an addition on. No offense, but you guys put me to hell. I so, got an underground spring that you guys said I did. You showed it to me on a map like a little river. Do you still have that information? I probably have my ass built still. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's uh. Which one, 67? Which one, so one, one, one on the right. Yes. That yeah, that's where you, you actually did a right. filing right. and came in front yeah, of Yeah, I came before yeah. you guys and I had to, so. That, but, that's 67, the, excuse me, the, yeah. the triangle shaped yeah. lot in the corner. Yeah. This plan is, is that plan yeah, that's there. What I'm that's it. That's 67. Right, but the wetland is actually not on this side of 67. It's on the other side right. of 67. Well, I was actually told it was. I mean, well, it, it went the, through my, the back of my yard and we into have the his filing. neighbor. We have the filing. We have the wetland delineation from that filing. And I provided yeah. that to the applicant and said, you know, take a look at this, but that's not within 100 feet of the property, I think, is what we figured out. Well, that, not only that, but it was, it was, didn't extend toward this little isolated area where right. we saw some ponding, which is what... No connectivity. Right, which is what made me determine that it was an isolated wetland. So he still may have some type of a wetland oh, or something Oh, he definitely on. has a wetland oh, on his property. But what you're saying is it's not within 100 feet of the subject property. Correct. Is that what you're telling us? Right. So I say this, it sure. comes from two places. One yeah. is, I believe it is an underground spring because it comes from my neighbor's yard out of nothing and then into my backyard and down by the parking lot of China Blossom. Yeah. That's part one. Part two is it definitely generates from his backyard. I mean, listen, we dig trenches because we're neighbors so it doesn't flood his yard all year. But um, there's a tremendous amount of water coming out of his side too. Is it, I mean, I, not from the delineation we have on file. Okay, which so I was here when we did. All right. Is, is there enough information? Again, here if, to go if out everyone would like to have us out there to walk this the is, back well, property boundary, I'd be happy it to seems do so. To me, if the property owners are willing, yeah, and I, they, I think we haven't heard from like we haven't heard from are. seventy-four then or fifty-one. I would, I would prefer 51. that yeah. they that. Uh, let, let them go out and do it. This gentleman here, I'll let Jen, with, uh, with Jen, yeah, I, go I agree. Out and look at the sites and make a determination. I, I totally agree with you, Doug. I think Is that the if, owner if the, of 51, Festa, uh, used to be Festa, no, are they here yet. tonight? No, so That's to complete fun. this puzzle, if there's any connectivity, hydraulic connectivity, which is required, otherwise you have a bunch of isolated pockets, if they all somehow connect, well, we would need to have the permission of well, Jen can knock on that door of all of all these folks. Well, and just as a caveat too, because I don't want to get into a can of worms here, you know, you're not allowed to do work or dig or otherwise alter these areas. So if you are doing that and you're inviting me onto your property, then we may have issues. Well, why don't we? Take it one little well, bite at a I time. Don't, I, That's an interesting. I don't want to have issues. Well, Jen, we, we don't want you to have issues either. We we you know uh, we would prefer you don't. However, uh, I so think it we're sounds in a tough like position, aren't we? Well, I mean, we're well, we're, no, we're, we're being asked. We're being asked not to make the determination until the investigation's been completed. Correct. In in the so what I'm hearing as a commissioner sitting here is marrying a group of neighbors, well intentioned and good friends it seems, because they're theirs a family yeah. it seems, but they um. They all wanted to be a wetland for the reason to inflict something on, on the, across the property line. I think but the reality is the same. So that same determination will hold true on all those properties Correct. moving yeah. forward. You know, if I hear Mr. Smolag very clearly, it sound, sounds to me like I don't think it can get any worse for him. <laughs> He's already been denied a project, so I mean, no, 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 no he, he didn't. He, 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 he got through hell. We gave him permit. Oh, you got you got through hell. Okay, but I had to go through to do it. 
but yeah. now it's sounding like from what I'm seeing is yeah. oh now it's not a big oh, listen I tried a couple of years ago to put a pool in well and they went wow you got all this stuff to do so it was so difficult for yeah. me to do anything I actually stopped that. no actually we're not any easier we're just more efficient so <laughs> okay, is that what it is now that's what it is but like I said and also they all came on our properties I mean in fact they to be quite honest with you they they asked to come on our properties I said I want you to they said well there'll be a cop there with us you can talk to him and he'll let you oh, come I on. never we're, dealt with cops we're, we're so not sending any cops me. We're not going to ask. Well, they were when they came with the surveyors. Okay, we're not. Oh, them. I mean, I'm not trying to give you a hard time. I'm just saying, listen, this is what happened. We to have me. we have our our wetland scientist and the applicant's wetland scientist. And if if the if you all agree, you you abutters agree, and you want some augering done in your backyard to determine the true extent of the wetland, that's how it's done. That's mm -hmm. the best way to do it. Otherwise, we have to accept the testimony before us with nothing to rebut it, nothing to refute it. Augering would either. Uh, lock in their testimony or we'll change it. But uh, right now, the, without, without the soil test being done, we don't have enough, no, I understand. Not, as they say in the NFL, not enough to overturn no, the No, I know. It just felt like it was no. going too easy, but yet it went hard before. That, yeah, I guess that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Well, I'm sorry you went through that, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, let us know now what, I guess. Well, my, my property guys, doesn't really hit, so my, mine's really, I'm just concerned at what's I, going there. And again, I, we have all heard a tremendous amount of rumors. I'm not going to bring them up, so I'm going to leave that alone. Well, we're not going to. But gonna, mine doesn't really hit that property. We're not going to speculate on anything other than they want to know where the wetland line is so they can determine right. where these. So, yeah, where mine, these mine is kind of out of it. So, uh, so you're you know, okay. I mean, I, it, it's there for wetlands, but okay. it's not on that property. Okay. Now. All right. Yeah, you're, you're too okay. far. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So, uh, are there any other abutters that want to ask questions, be heard, or be included in the soil analysis anybody all right so let's go back to mr duffy could you give uh, mr smalley and i uh, a couple minutes to confer with, with this chart okay that's an unusual request i'll tell you what we can <laughs> step outside and you guys can do whatever you need to well, we could do a couple things right here. I mean, it seems to me like there's, yes. a, there's an opportunity. Yeah, step outside for a couple of days. Just don't go far, okay, guys? Yeah, thank you. If I have to send a runner after you, I don't yeah, want we'll him to. Yeah. Right I don't want to send a marathon. Yeah, it seems like there's an opportunity where we're going to be getting some additional information one way or the other. And I'm wondering if we just continue and, and take the testimony at the next meeting. Well, I, and I'm inclined to agree with you. Um, but I Because I don't want these folks to make a hasty decision because we right. put them under the gun and so say, make a decision now. I. I you know, I agree with that too. Um, I like that. I like Jen. You're willing to? Uh, we're, we're gonna. We're gonna. It sounds like the inclination for the commission right now is to continue this for two weeks, pending for well, I'm playing for that. that. It's up to, it's to the applicant whether he yeah. wants to continue or not. Well. Well, I mean, the other thing is you, I mean, it would be in the applicant's best interest to ha to be certain because I'm if you're not certain, so. you yeah. could I'm vote I'm not to. I'm certain that the applicant is not going to object. I just can't believe he would. It's it sufficient data. Yeah. We, we, have, we do have, we have evidence that the data is incomplete, and we have evidence that the abutters are willing to allow the data to be completed. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're in a position where we can, we can continue it for that reason. We would hope that you would assent to the continuance. Of course. Yeah, Thank I mean, you. So, but, but at the same time, we want to move things along and, if possible, schedule a site visit between now and the next hearing. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that would be the goal. I, I think that that would be a, a precondition to this whole thing. We want to get it done within the next 14 days. Right. We, we, we all so, agree on that. So We're not going to. I think it prevents you from moving along with your plans. Oh, I'd, I'd, well, I'd, right. I'd, I understand that. But at the same time, you know, if we do end up hanging additional flags, those yeah. are going to have to be surveyed. We're going to have to revise gotcha. the plan. No, listen, I got you. I, I, I cut you. We're, not, we're not trying to be punitive here. Yep. So we're absolutely not trying to be punitive. We're trying to, we want to take care of our neighbors also. I understand. Um, so that's a good idea. Why don't we uh, just tell them we're going to continue it. If, Mike, would you? Thanks, buddy. And things might actually get better for us. I, I was just going to say, you know, well, it, well, it be, see, that's the, that's the risk when you roll the dice, you know, so. And I think I misspoke. I think it was Mr. Smolak who said he didn't it's okay. give us permission. So what? He's coming back. In. Okay. Good. Oh, thank you. Come on, guys. <laughs> we have a solution that you don't have to make a decision tonight. What we're going to do is this. We're going to continue this for two weeks. Okay. And during that two-week period, hopefully, like by tomorrow, you guys make a decision of what you want us to do because at the next meeting we'll vote with whatever information we have. And if we have additional information from your abutting properties, that's great. If we don't, we're going to consider that we've made a good faith effort to try to get it. So uh, we're going to continue for 14 days 
and in that 14-day period, we'll hope that this all gets done. One thing that we weren't, because we don't know what we're looking at when we see sure. that. You yeah. see those circles that you made? Right. Um, what do they actually mean? See, what? I see the first so one. The Does that mean nothing can be built in it? Right. A 25 no. No, not that. That's what we need to clarify. Well, well let me, the 25 foot is what we call a no disturb zone. So technically, all things being equal, the no disturb zone means you can't do anything in there. Right. In the, the first, circle. the smallest circle. The smallest circle. Smallest circle. Yeah. Then from 25 to 50, that's that's a no build zone. But there are there are conditions and where sometimes waivers can be granted to build in the no build zone. It's not not popular. It doesn't happen all the time, but it has happened. So and then the hundred foot is the furthest um, ring of uh, jurisdictional. Uh, and, and what does that ring represent? Well, it means that that's the, what brings them back before the, the hundred foot is what makes the project jurisdictional. Anything that happens within that hundred foot zone is jurisdictional. Uh, if they stay outside of the hundred foot, we have no jurisdiction at all. So if they if they propose the project with everything the way it is right now, right. and it was outside the hundred, we'd have nothing to talk about. Unless nothing if there is more one hundred foot buffer zone on the property, we would want to know. So they have to know what the what the project is that they're, I mean, in well, order for us to all be sitting here, they must want They do not. The well, I think they, they want to do something. People, I think they want to do something, but they could be wanting to put a Walmart there. They might want a restaurant. I mean, who knows? Just to be clear, yeah, we don't people know. delineate a property so they can do planning. I mean, I worked on the you other side of the fence before, and that's, you, you find out where your wetlands are so you can decide what you want to do and where. Because you can't, you can't take and position uh, an envelope on the property if you don't know where your setbacks are. You just can't do it. So the, the wetland determines the setbacks, okay. tells them where everything is. So that's, that's the whole starting point, and that's, that's really everything to the project. Once they do that, you know where everything's going. Mr. Chairman, um, Sir. just to clarify, you know, the information we're trying to gather between now and the next hearing day, uh, I add to it, if, you, uh, if I miss anything, is primarily to determine the size of the wetland that we know is out there but we don't know enough about and the setback of that wetland line from the property line of the subject property. Primary, that's the two you know, main pieces of information. Okay. information. Oh, and if it's connected to another one. Three things. The, the thing is if they can go on the, the abutting properties and they can determine what wetlands are out there, the size of them, the location of them, they can determine whether it's jurisdictional under the Wetlands Act or only under the local bylaw or non-jurisdictional at all. Right. Well, and once right. they do that, then they can determine an accurate location for the, the buffer zones. And then they can get a, a, a delinea ask for a delineation, request for a delineation of the wetlands. And, and rather than have this, what's before us now, then they can determine it and <coughs> the location of the buffer zones and everything. That is good for what did you say, five years? Well, I said three, five, three, but Joe three, says three. Three, three years. And uh, what like I, then they can go ahead with their planning and put whatever they, they, yeah. their idea is to uh, put up there. I don't know what zoning district is it in anyway. Well, you, you know, again, it, it all depends on what they're doing. But, but to answer everybody's question, whatever they decide to put there, whatever it is, is going to be totally determined by where, the, where those lines get locked in. Once they're locked in, that determines that area. So that's the purpose of additional augering if you all decide to go along with it or you might talk talk tomorrow and decide are hey, you happy with the way it is. Uh, it's, it's totally, yep, it's your call. You have so really where would it make sense to do the augering and which three yards? Well, that. And make the ones that border yeah. the property. So the ones that. You go one, two, three. I would say that one, one here, that like one, this, that these, one. these three properties. I would I guess. say four. Take it right down to right down the to small X. Take those. those so so basically, yeah, those corner four. to corner along the bottom bottom bo uh, border here from this from this corner to that corner. Get in there and just so see what's. So the abutter that's not here, maybe the other abutters can yeah, talk can to him. Yeah, we can talk to him. And I'm sure he probably agreed to it. Get Again, I'm going to say my yard. Uh, I really don't need anything done in it because my yard is out of it. Yeah. But. It's his backyard. Well, if like it I does said, connect, if they do connect, and you've got an well, area that's already just it does go from his into mine, maybe. But at the right. moment, don't say no. So they got to get this jurisdiction but they, when it connects. But they got to get out. Default, it all becomes yes. jurisdiction. They got to. You got to either. You know, it's everybody's in the boat or everybody's out of the boat. I guess. You know, you got to. Well, I'm looking at three properties that hit the back. Mine hits it. Yeah. In a penny. Yeah. So I'm sure. Looking at I, it I got you. I, I got you. So, you guys think about it. We're gonna. We're gonna. <coughs> we're gonna continue this for 14 days. The applicant 
is not opposed to a continuance. Uh, the applicant agrees that they're going to let us continue for 14 days for further investigation of the soils. And that's, that's what we're going to do. So you're all going to have to, once we continue, you know, the clock is ticking, you guys get your thing going, okay? And will the neighbors contact Ms. Hughes via email? Um, email or phone, call. Call. phone, phone call. call the conservation department, however you decide. Jen, Jen, Jen will stay in touch with you okay. because you guys will be doing it together. Okay. It's not going to be an independent thing. Right. She's, she's going to hook up with you, and you guys are going to go out there, and you're going to do it just like you always do, right. as if you were applying. Uh, like we did for the subject for the re for, Yes, right. exactly. No, we're not going to. There's no, we're not going to try to pull a fast one here. Yeah, no, no, no that's fine. All right. Okay. Any other questions? So Go. two weeks from tonight, there'll be another meeting. Another we'll, meeting. we'll be we'll back be here. here. Yeah, we'll be back here in two weeks. And on that, at that meeting, we've got to have this all done. No, oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah, two weeks, two weeks from tonight. Am I, get, am I giving them the right info? Yes. The right. 26th. Okay. How do I get a copy of, of what's being proposed now as, as the wetland uh, area? We can, uh, can, we can provide you a copy. If not tonight, at the office tomorrow. Yeah, you can take one of mine. There you go, right there. Right, this is, uh, or if you have uh, the ability, maybe we okay. could even send you something electronically, maybe. Did you, give me, you didn't give me full size. Yeah, I believe we submitted an electronic oh, copy okay. of the application, but we yeah. can we can certainly do that. Again. So as long as he doesn't have a computer like mine, he could probably get it. <laughs> Did I see handwritten notes on that, or is that okay? Actually, yeah, if you could give me I, From I, Crosshair that I saw notes. Maybe not, but... Um, you if you provide your email address, I can email you. I have the. PDF. I have the. Um, the. Um, did you did you stick an eleven by seventeen in here? Mm, Sharon produced it. I'm not sure. I think she gave you full size copies. Okay. Yeah. This is my only one. So if you actually, if you email me tomorrow, I can send you. I, I have it here, and I can email it to anyone. Okay. Do you have a card? I was just looking, they're, they're all, I don't have one here in the, um, but I'm on the town website, my phone number, my email, everything is on the town website. 688-9530 is yeah. the conservation department, 688-9530, area code 978. Or I'm Jay Hughes, town of North, uh, northandovermma.gov. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Anybody else, guys? Thank you. All right, so let us just get it done. So I need a motion. Motion to continue for two weeks. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Two weeks. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks very much. Thank you. Appreciate everybody's help. I'm going to uh, I'm going to hand the chair back to Mr. Mr. Napoli. Is now the chairman again. This was not an abdication of power. We'll take a break for uh, we're taking a break for uh, two minutes. <clears throat> Even though I know we're still on the air, we're taking a break. We don't have a little sign, huh, that says we're taking a break? No, all right. We got to get one of those and put it in. All right. Okay. Our producer, There's Mr. Howard, we want to thank you for your assistance. We want you. It will, it'll, it'll, in no way will it help you at all. <laughs> yeah, it has. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> it's only going to make it worse. <laughs> that's that's how lucky for you. Mike, aren't you glad you never had a project like that where everybody had to go in and review your work? Huh? It's been it's happened before, right? Yeah. Hey, you know what? I, you got to give them credit. They're all gonna, they're gonna get together and see what they got, right? Yeah, for the rest of you, there's no extra charge for the entertainment here. We throw it in as part of your filing fee and everything. Usually, <laughs> right. A Merrimack jacket or a Michigan jacket? Michigan. Michigan. Oh, unfortunately, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Wait, is that the Michigan that Tom Brady went to? He used to be about the same age. Seen. So <laughs> then, uh, then you're okay here. You're all right. That's that's the correct Michigan to wear. <laughs> sorry, job hazard. Tick. <laughs> all right, we're back. <laughs> Mr. Napoli has the chair now. We're back. Thank you. Uh, that being said, we're not here for 83 old farmers.
Okay, so I just got the abutter notifications. And I think you have the pictures. This is to fence an existing yard. I don't know what that line is there. Mm. It's not a clothesline, it's a dog run. So I, I don't know. It could be. So here is the property. Um, the property is lawfully developed. I believe has a certificate of compliance. Is what Heidi wrote. In the uh, the owner would like to fence the existing backyard. Um, as you can tell, the the shed is um, not in the proper location, which would technically be 50 feet off of the wetland. Um, it is not approved, has been there for some time, is quite old. Um, it appears on aerials between the, the mid-1990s and 2001. Um, the owner, do you want to come in? Yeah. So I mean, we have approved fences in the no disturb zone before. Um, we have had try we've tried to offset them from the wetland as much as possible without sort of restricting what the existing approved yard was. Um, in this case, I, I believe the fence has its proposed as about two feet off the wetland line. I know you would probably like to see it somewhat farther off the wetland line, so I think it's best if you discuss. <laughs> Um, yeah, typically um, we we don't allow disturbance within the 25 foot no disturb. Um, I'm not sure about the history of the uh, old farm road site the development. I mean, um, you know how those lawns were eventually defined, but it looks like that's been a manicured lawn, you know, almost up to the wetland line for quite a long time. It looks established mm -hmm. in that area anyway. Um, but typically, we, you know, to keep these wetlands vibrant and uh, well-functioning, uh, the buffer zone means a lot. It, it cleanses water that would fall, and it wouldn't run through a fertilized lawn. It would have some filtration ability to cleanse the water that recharges the wetland and keep it healthy and uh, with native species. You know, animal and plant. So, um, you know, in terms of fence, I can recall. I think we had a, I think we had one over there um, off of Chestnut Street uh, that we required. I think ten or fifteen feet so far, something like that. Yeah, there was yeah, one on Boxburg. There was one on Boxburg yeah, Street too. She had a much smaller backyard, but I think we did about. 10 to 15 feet off. Yeah, I would. I will clarify that when Heidi came out to view the property, um, and we just purchased this a few months ago, so the shed uh, pre-existed when we when we purchased it. Um, it was her opinion that we had a wetlands engineer come out, mark the wetlands, that that lawn was the original delineation of the wetland, um, and that it had been maintained at that same level, um, and that you know certainly that the shed. Um, I understand kind of violates the the uh, no build zone so to the extent that you know as part of this process removing the shed is is something the committee would look on favorably I'm I'm open to that idea if you feel like there's kind of a trade-off here with with supporting the the wetland area but also um, putting a, a fence together that won't I'll lose significant usage of the yard by moving the fence in 10 or 15 feet. There are a number of, I would say, in the neighborhood, I don't have the exact number, but a, a handful of fences that are established at the outline of the property. I don't know what their process was for coming before the committee to, to build those fences, but I was trying to take the appropriate channels to put up the fence. What kind of a fence is a chain link? Uh, we were, the quote we have is for a vinyl picket fence down the sides of the property and a chain link fence along the, the rear boundary of the property. If the material impacts the decision at all, I'm, I'm open to discussing that. I would say that the, the distance is more important to me than the material. Mm. 
if you feel like one is more beneficial. And, uh, and there's debris behind the shed? Yeah, so the, the debris that's behind the shed, I, I likely should have inspected at the time I purchased the property. Mm -hmm. um, I did not, but I am open to removing the debris if that's the committee's request. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, if I understand it correctly, the, the fence you're proposing is two feet in from the uh, wetland line, approximately? Approximately, yes. And um, let me ask Jen, Jen, is the problem is the problem more with the shed or the location of the fence? Because, I mean, I don't feel like the fence location is bad. I just don't have a problem with it. I mean, you get to choose. I just, we looked back at some of the prior filings, and you had them offset the fence as much as possible. So, um, you know, there's no buffer zone, and there never will be if the fence goes at two feet off the wetland line. If he doesn't put a fence and leaves it the way it is, this, the, the buffer zone stays the way it is too. Yeah, mowing. In He's going to continue to mow. Not a, not a He's going to continue to mow the lawn right. with no fence there. Correct. So, the fence is almost an, uh, a gain for us because it will prevent egress into the resource area. Um, so, you know, we did one with um, people came for an above ground pool on um, Dale Street. Yeah, I have a one year old daughter and a dog. And, ten yeah. feet, I think. As you could see, there was a. I mean, a dog dog, again, dog. Yeah. There's going to be dog waste so two feet off the wetland line. It closes the entire back. Yeah. What are we? Sorry? The fence closes the entire back. Yes. Yes. So, Mr. Uh, Buckley. Just, but Mr. Buckley, so. I can't, obviously I can't speak for anybody else here, I'm just giving you my own opinion, but my, my opinion is that maybe if that shed were to get closer to the house a little bit, um, it might make, and the, and the area gets cleaned up, it might mm -hmm. make the, the fence more palatable. It, it was Heidi's opinion that the, the shed likely wouldn't survive a move based on yeah. its condition, so I'm, kidding, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm open to... I, I, don't, I don't know, I didn't see the shed. Yeah, so. there were some pictures so, in the file. Yeah. Um, Heidi didn't have time to print them, so she did this. There's a decent amount of wood rot on the bottom of the so, shed. So do you need the shed? If you made the shed go away, would you be willing to just make the shed go away? You could roll that. I think you could roll it, too. I think you have some pipes under it. It might move, but... Uh, Case of beer and 16 friends. <laughs> we're not advocating. <laughs> Two hours. We're, we're, not, we're not advocating the beer. Right? We'll leave the <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not currently using this shed. Um, as you can see, is in a, a bit of a state of disrepair when we purchased the home. So, um, outside of maybe the cost of removing the shed, there was nothing that would inhibit me from doing so. I mean, it, 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 most sheds you can get, you can roll, you can move them by putting pipes under them and rolling them. You might be able to move it up 10 feet, 15 feet, whatever you have to do to make it compliant. Mm -hmm. And I think if the shed were compliant, I think the fence wouldn't be a problem. That's just my specul. I'm just speculating. Mm -hmm. So. If I if I would commit to either moving or removing yeah either move or remove the shed I think the fence is I don't think the fence becomes a problem I think the violation is the is the shed see it's a structure I will let the previous owner know so I think that that would make life easier yes. for you yes no I, uh, okay just just my two cents but I'm yep. just putting it out there so yeah I, if if that's a I'm not sure how the it's an idea legalities of it work but I'm if giving it's you a, an idea you could run with it if you want. It would have to be more than 50 feet away from the wetland to be compliant. The shed she's talking about. would need to be more than 50 feet from the rear. Mm -hmm. the yeah. rear from the wetland border. line. Yeah, structures have to be 50 feet or more away. So, you know, however you think you can do it, mm -hmm. if you could get it up right. closer, you know. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, the, like you said, it, it's unfortunate that the condition of the shed Violation is a violation. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've moved sheds before, regardless if they're in a good condition or bad condition. Um, the looking at the the tree line, the tree line is pretty distinctive. I mean, you're not you, you wouldn't be going beyond the tree line, the bush line. Like, see, like yeah, from the from where the shed is, right? Yeah. So, so you're not you're not you're not going back any farther. The plan is not to disrupt. Put that sketch back up. Because I'm, I'm looking at the uh, this picture here. Yeah, he, wants, he has to come this way. And you got to come this he's, way. He's coming anyways. this way. Yeah, he's got to come. Yeah, this the way. plan is not to disrupt any of the existing bushes or, or shrubbery. That's yeah, you, like, right. so you gotta, you gotta, we'll follow. We'll follow the line. But like, like I said, I, and if I'm looking the way the the fence is, you have the fence. Is that the way you're going to design your fence so it looks like a snake? I mean, wouldn't it make sense to go like straight across from like the from each knob from like the 
the corner, you know, I'm not saying the front of the shed, but like a few feet from the shed and then go right straight across. You're not, you're not going to lose, you're not going to lose that much. You're talking, you're not even going to look at five feet. And aesthetically. We designed the layout here with not, not understanding that the shed would be removed. So certainly if the shed is moved or removed, uh, I likely would not have the extra yeah, I mean, Bump aesthetically, the it thing. would look, you know, I think it would look much better if it was in a straight line versus following the contour of the, of the brush line. I mean, eventually that brush will go fill in anyway, so it would look all the same. But because we're trying to save as much as the wetlands as we can. Um, so this, you should probably, I mean, if you're going to change the fence, you know, determine the fence line, you should probably mark it on one of these plans for me. Cause like I'm or, or, or we could give them, a, give them two weeks to... Think about it and come back. We could give you a continuance. You don't have to make a decision. Just, just for my own thought, remembrance, because I, they, when I, we first worked here, it was, it was French Farm was the front street, and then they moved it to the back street. Are you, are you part? You're in the back. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I know, but this, this doesn't help me because okay. is this part of the section? You're part of the interior this, this, loop. No, closer to uh, 125. You know where this is, right? Yeah. Yeah, but the, the, what I think you were saying is. There was the loop of the roads and the backyards all the together park. were deliberately designed to yeah, collect one, water, and they all became a wetland. Right. That's exactly right. That, this that, is not that backyard. That, this is, this that, is on the uh, outside? That swale. No, this is down the middle, behind yeah. him, and then there's more houses on Correct. the other side. Yeah, so the, there's, the there's houses on each side. Yeah, there's houses on Back each side. So this is that the, middle it's area, in the middle area that yeah. was designed right. to be wet. He's closer to, you know, he's not closer to Barker Street. He's farther from Barker Street. But it doesn't matter. Right, but he's uh, he's part of the inner circle. Is what I'm trying to say. Is this you come on the French farm and you go right, and then he's on that side, and then you go down the road. And he's, on the, he's, he's on, on, the, he's on, on the this side, but then if you went on the other side, this how they're they're back to back. And, he's, he's and the wetlands in the middle. And he's in that right, situation. That's what I'm asking. He looks out his backyard. He sees the houses on the other side of the street. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying. You're you're part of the like this. There's houses on the outside. The whole thing is a circle, though. I don't know about the inner circle. There's well, only there's one big else. circle. There's the outside circle of houses. If you go down the road, there's, there's houses on the right that don't abut the swale. Oh, okay. I see. And there's houses on the left that do abut the swale, and then, or depending which way you go. The hole in the donut right. is the wetland. Is the wetland. We're, we're all talking about the same thing. Right. And, that, and that swale's been there well, forever, just forever the and a day. Well, farm goes all the way around. That swale wasn't created. It was there in the subdivision. So now we know where we are. What's your question? Well, that's why I'm saying to make it, it would, we're, try, we're trying to preserve it because this has been getting beaten up pretty good over the years from all the houses. So, so I'm just saying if we if we cut, cut that knob off and just made a straight line. I think we should let him go think about it for two weeks. He's gonna you, know, you know what I'm trying to say? Stand up and draw it on the, I can't not stand up. We could draw it on, the, I just passed a you, plan. Yeah. Jim, we already, we talked about this earlier today. Instead of it looking like a line, you know it looks like Kansas. <laughs> 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 I'm showing what I think you're thinking of. We talked about it today. He's talking about, so if you took out the shed, you would do this. I think we should move this along. I'm trying. You know, the other thing too is if you move that shed up, now he's going to have an issue with his neighbor. Right. So am I able to understand, I guess, the committee's yeah, yeah. position on, because I, I don't have a lot of information at this point about the cost or difficulty of moving the shed or removing the shed. Even that, that's not right. At this point, if the shed remained where it was, um, would that make it difficult to approve the waiver for the buffer zone for the fence? What, what I'm hearing from my fellow commissioners is it sounds like it's a deal break. I can't write the shed. Because it's the shed's the violation. Okay, no, that's what I was trying to understand. How the, shed, the shed is the violation. Of doing the, this. the fence is the proposal. That's useless. And you're saying you're, you're saying you want a fence. It's not here. Correct. We're it's saying we want to help you, but you got a shed that's a violation. Okay, and once I remove the shed, is the decision as far as how the the curvature of the fence sits? Is that a aesthetics or is that that the approval would be contingent on? modifying the plan to reflect a, a horizontal line as opposed to the curvature. I think what we're trying to get at is if you look at the, the, the backyard, your neighbor's backyard, the buffer zone comes up to basically the front of your shed. See the straight line that goes across to the, to the left of the shed? We'd like to continue that line straight across. So the, the new fence line would run in front of the shed and connect up with what you're showing 
as the like last hump in the snake, so to speak, in the middle there, and keep going across and then follow your line. So you, you would basically cut off the area where the shed used to be and allow okay. that to revert to a natural state. Yeah. Okay. So we'd be recovering wetland. We'd be recovering resource area. Okay. So can I amend my plan to? You you can't. Let's. You to can. We still have a couple more questions to okay. ask because I. Plus. I'm all set. You are all set. So I, I also. Yeah. Want so I'm just ch tripping it. I'm looking at photographs that were taken from the side yard looking to the back and from the driveway looking to the back and from the side yard. It looked like there's a cable. It looked like a dog run or something or whatever. Yeah, I have a, we have a dog runner between the sh the deck and the, and the shed. shed. Okay, that's what I. That I, can I be removed. All right, because I I've been sitting here and I've been kind of torn with the the, the whole premise that. If you do nothing, you don't even end up being here. You just continue to use the yard the way you've been using it to the day you bought it. So you're coming in doing the right thing, and this is where I'm starting to side with Al. Whatever we get in return should be some sort of an improvement to what it is you need as to our protection of the wet one without making it too onerous on you guys. Mm -hmm. um, I think the shed is a, a non-starter. We keep saying you have, you have. Well, you bought a property that had. You guys, you didn't Understand. do anything. We know Understand. that, right? Um, but I think the shed does have to go. And I thought I was seeing a dog run that was there. So, from my perspective, restoring some sort of buffer zone to Jack's point is very important because you're going to have. I mean, you do have animal waste in your backyard, and an animal that may relieve himself further to the back of the yard may not get as much attention if he does it close to your house. So. The reality is the return of some buffer zone, given the use, given the known use, I think is important. So squaring off the snake, mm -hmm. as we were talking, and we've been gesturing you know, with you know, our fingers at a, at, a, at a board on the wall here, I think we, we need to better understand exactly what sort of buffer zone we're looking for in order to restore buffer zone, in order to protect the wetland from fecal matter, from dog waste. Because pet waste is a huge pollutant stream for bacteria in our resource areas. It's huge. It's, it's one of the biggest things we fight in stormwater. So we've made a couple of gestures, but I'm, I'm thinking that getting something close to that 10 feet additional buffer zone at a minimum, we normally require 25, but I'm saying with, with the known use of pets, at least 10 feet is something that I think we should be looking for. Uh, and the shed going, can or I, at least moving. Can I just make a... a Boy, so I, I think when you get up further along the right side, and, and we did some of these measurements with Heidi, you know, as you extend into that 10-foot range, you, you start to be in the, in the, middle, of the, the middle of the property. And I think she, her, her, her opinion was this is an example of the usage of the yard and the property being compromised by that buffer zone and make a well, request for Well, that's why I waiver. started my statement by saying I'm torn. Mm -hmm. You can go about doing what you have been doing and being in compliance. Right. Because currently the dog does go to the back part of the property. And and so I'm, I'm trying to be realistic mm -hmm. in recognizing the use and, and doing what we would relax what we would normally do, which is require a 25-foot setback for this fence. And I'm saying something like 10 feet, and I don't think that's arbitrary. When I mean, we're looking at animal waste, and 10 feet is what you typically want in the buffer zone. But it doesn't have to be so. 10 feet. On, on, at all points. You're no, no, about, no. You're talking about 10 feet back in. On average. So talking, if you, if you, if you just stre stretch a straight line corner to corner. It doesn't have to be 10 feet everywhere. If you, again, I know people at home can't see this maybe, but you know, corner here to corner there, you get more than 10 feet here, you get a little less there, you get probably 10 feet there, and at the corners itself you get less. I think overall, so an, average of an, an average of 10 feet is, some, is something reasonable. And, and to scale, that, that's, that shed looked like it was about 12 feet deep just by the photos 10 to 12 feet deep so that's what you're looking at is it's cutting off the, the squiggly part of the bottom okay. of your uh, manicure lawn yeah the, the edit that jen had made to the map if that's what the committee is proposing now they're talking yeah that's like some more well, yours had a dog leg too oh yeah so I'm you're talking, talking this is what we were just talking about so something more like that and we can be a little more flexible toward the uh, shed, I think. 
Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be too harsh. You know, he's, no, coming, he's coming in here doing the right thing. It doesn't have to yeah. be harsh. You, you know what? If the shed is underutilized, you'd be 10 I didn't even say the shed there. Or whatever that connecting would be. Well, we got to be consistent. It's got to go. Uh, it's got so, I mean, the wetlands, when she came out to mark the wetlands, she was marking branches that were deeper into he, the he woods than well, the actual, that's what I'm saying. So the actual run, delineation. So, so whatever feet. this flag would be, they want this to be the shed, 10 feet. The fence off want this to be well, an average of 10 feet, right? So if this was 15 feet, this could only be 5 feet? I think they want more of a straight line. But I think they wanted to start basically 10 feet off. And they want 10 feet in here. And then if it's a little less than here, I mean, my just my... My fear is that as I segment off and I, I support the maintaining the, the wetlands, but, you know, just parts plan, of my lawn that plan got a scale on it or something? No. will be overgrown. And right. I, well, I think what we do, we'll have a good discussion. I mean, there's some stuff that you probably want to go back and talk to your wife about and, and, and understand what this means to your family. I mean, two weeks to understand that and come back and say, yeah, better understand what you can do, what we are asking. Maybe there's something in between. You know, that's something that can happen in those next two weeks. But uh, you had, you have no, to Well, you know, one thing about the shed, either the shed goes completely, uh, would you demolish it, take it off your property, you don't have a shed, or you move it. Now, if you move it, you're going to uh, move it up close to now. You may have an issue with your neighbor, you know, looking at the existing shed, and they don't want to look at it. You're also going to need to talk to make sure it's located uh, within the zoning setbacks, stuff like that. So you need to research that if you want to keep the shed or replace it with a new shed mm -hmm. at, at an appropriate location. Uh, so that's an issue you want to look at. And then, uh, you know, how we square off the back or do it then. I think, I think we should let him come back to us with a proposal. I, mean, I, don't think we should, I don't think we should be sitting here doing this. We should. No, you know, you've yeah, heard the concerns. Now you can come take a look at it. And, okay. And we can come out and discuss what seems reasonable and then right, do a better scaled plan that shows. Okay. Um, so, but they'll continue for two weeks and you can come back and discuss this with them look for a last time on the 26th. Now, okay. if you have a scaled plan, you can actually draw in the, you know, me measure it off. We don't the have wet, a scaled but, plan. Well, perhaps. You can Maybe for from the that I don't remember in the filing in the old. We we hired a wetland engineer. Is that the question? You can. Well, you it's you not can, going to be you precise. You can you you know we what your property line is. We can you can just know the width. You can determine a scale. You can get a proportionate scale. It doesn't okay. have to be for the scale. You can get a proportionate exactly. scale and show it to us. Okay. You know how wide the property is. You can yep. measure that off and then mm -hmm. you determine well, this number of inches equals 50 feet or whatever the width of the property is, 100 feet or whatever it is. So now you you can use that. As the scale, then you can locate the fence, and you can exactly see how much of the backyard you would lose theoretically from squaring things off. And then you can look at the shed. If I move it so it's 50 feet from the wetlands, you can say that's where the shed would be. <coughs> what effect is it going to have on my neighbor? Maybe it's behind the trees that are there between the neighbor, that, so they don't see as much of it. And whether you like it there or not, and you can decide whether you want to keep a shed or. Replace it with a new one or whatever you want to do. Yeah. Move to continue for two weeks. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's name. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> no buster. Um, notice of intent 214 will file the 50-year request. Request to continue. So move. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Doug and then uh, Deb. <coughs> Excuse me. Same for the next one. Uh, 242 uh, 30 Ironwood request to continue at 1026. So move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's the end of that. Next one is 242 no file number 150, flagship drive. Just a quick clarification on Ironwood. That was continued from the last meeting, right? Didn't We didn't leave them with much of a. They had to file with planning. Is that and they're not going to be heard for two that's, weeks. That's what it was. Okay. They had much with us. There's a, can I have my photos back from Old Farm, too? Did you 
Did you send me the RDA? I didn't get to download it onto here, but I mean the NO yeah, you did. Okay. Sorry. Um but they we have the plan that you sent me. Did you send me another this is the one you sent me earlier in the day? I sent you two today. I have a hard copy too. Um this isn't it? That's the earlier one. I sent you one later in the day that showed us outside the fifty. Okay. Yeah, I, can, I, I, can, I didn't get to do you have it and do you have copies for me? I do. Okay. Um Mr. Chair? Mr. Napoli, Mr. Chair. Um, good evening, folks. So for the record, my name is Mike Howard from Epsilon Associates. Uh, with me tonight is my colleague, Rihanna Summers from Epsilon Associates. And to my left is Nicole Duquette from MHF Design Consultants and Jeff Poor. Jeff, just raise your hand. Jeff's the applicant, the landowner at Flagship um, LLC. Um, I'm, I'm going to be brief in my comments, and then I'm going to turn it over to, Rih to Rihanna to... Uh, <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's coming. So I'm just, I'm just going to be very brief. Then I'll turn over to Rihanna to, to walk you through the notice of intent, and then Nicole will speak briefly about the stormwater uh, management system. Um, so just some some housekeeping things. Um, Jen, this is the proof of mailing. Uh, we do not have a DEP file number, unfortunately. Um, we spoke to DEP today, and they about two weeks behind in issuing the numbers, but they did acknowledge they had ours, they were going to issue a number, but then they realized our filing fee check hadn't cleared at the lockbox yet. So um, I don't have a file number for the commission tonight, unfortunately. Um, but if the, if the check doesn't clear, Jen, in a couple of days, I'll avoid it and send another one. Um, so I just we needed the wetland that we're going to talk about in a minute um, a couple weeks ago. Um, Jen conducted her review last week. Um, Jen made a couple tweaks to the to the flag locations. Um, those tweaks resulted in one of our proposed parking spaces, again, which we're going to talk about in a minute, um, within the 50 foot no disturbance zone by two feet, 48 feet from the wetlands. Um, so we've been working with Nicole's office to revise our plan to make sure our design conforms to the commission's 50 foot no build zone with regards to parking spaces. Uh, we did not want to ask for a waiver for that. So we were scrambling to do that today. Um, I understand Jen just got those plans late today. Um, I also have hard copies for the commission. Jen, I have two sets of those stamped revised plans. And then just the last housekeeping um, item, um, Jen, <coughs> on the notice of intent, I listed um, channel as the applicant. It should, that should also have been Jeff Moore, who's the owner. I have a revised NOI form for your records too, Jen. Okay, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rihanna. She'll walk you briefly through existing conditions. Um, uh, and then proposed conditions, again, we'll turn it over to Nicole from there. So with that, Rihanna? Okay. So Flagship Press, who's the applicant and owner, they're a printing facility, which, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a lot easier to see. Um, so it's a, a printing facility, and it's located here. 150 flagship drive. You can see. You guys can just tilt your head to the left over here. Thank you, perfect, Mr. Chairman. You can make that work. Sorry. A little bit easier to see. So they are proposing, in order to accommodate parking for their existing employees and also their customers, they're proposing to construct 19 new parking spaces <coughs> along this northern part of the site, right along the entrance side here. And so a little bit of background just about the site. There's, as you can see, the existing building, flagship press, their existing parking areas basically on each side of the building. 
And then there's a DEP mapped bordering vegetated wetland, which is forested, which is located up here. And you'll see on the existing conditions plans after, but it wraps around the building. And also at the site, it's primarily grassed areas, um, except for these impervious, obviously the parking lot and entrance drive. And then actually the site was delineated in the late 1990s and there was a prior order of conditions that was issued. And under that order of conditions, there were some stormwater BMPs that were added along the perimeter of the site. And there's also a small stormwater drainage swale that's located about here on the western side of the entrance drive that um, conveys stormwater through a concrete culvert over here and then it flows into the BDW. And, oh, that borders on and in our main stream. So, now I'll go into the existing condition. There is a certificate of compliance for the order as well. There's no open order now. Right, it has a COC. So, I went out to the site in August and delineated the resource areas. And when I went out, I delineated both this BDW, which you can see in this old line here, basically follows largely the stone wall along this side of the building, and then continues this way south. And I also delineated what I thought was an IDW right here, a small bullet depression, but with subsequent conversations with Mike and Jennifer, they're they came to the determination that this is actually a constructed stormwater basin, so it's actually not jurisdictional. So we removed the buffer zones lines from that. But we still have this forested BBW here. We have the 25 foot no disturbance zone and the 50 foot no build zone, and then of course the 100 foot buffer off of it. And that is about it for the existing. And then we have our proposed conditions. So, as I said earlier, they're proposing 19 new parking spaces and three different, well, actually, kind of like four different clusters. So, the five is connected to the in the 100 foot, but that minor amount of grading in the 50 foot. 
and the erosion. So maybe with that, Mr. Chair, we'll have Nicole walk you through what we're thinking about from a stormwater perspective. All right, well, let's, let's get some questions first. Fair enough. The grading inside the one fit, uh, inside the 50 foot no disturb zone or the 50 foot no build zone um, is well that that looks like it's going to be a permanent regrading. It's proposed grade. Yep. Are there any uh, retaining walls proposed? No, just loam and seed. Just loam and seed. Yes, thank you. And uh, really, at one point, that that grouping, grouping of nine spaces. Uh, just touches the 50-foot no disturb, no build. Yeah, the let's, uh, yep. Um, and the rest is uh, outside. Right. Um, any fencing that is proposed? Permanent fencing? No, sir. Yep. All set for now. Okay, uh, you had said that there were going to be 19 spaces? Yes. Okay, not 18. It's right. 19. Originally, when we filed it, it was 18 that were being proposed. But uh, when they were looking back at the plans after the flags, there were a couple flags that were changed. And that pushed, there were originally six spots that were proposed <coughs> here, and one of them uh, dipped a little bit into the 50 foot no build. So they were actually able to experiment a little bit and they found out that you can fit two spots up here and remove this spot so that they're all within the 100 foot. So there's there's a take home message by complying with the 50 we're able to add an extra spot so <laughs> there's 19 spaces proposed. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Not right now. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I'm going to wait to get this little discussion. Yeah I'm all set. I'm all set for now. Okay. With that Mr. Chair, Nicole I'll turn it over to you. from MHF Design Consultants. Um, there are a couple of things that I did want to mention on the existing conditions. Um, back when this was originally permitted in 1996, um, there was a restrictive covenant that was along the stone wall that we were not allowed to disturb within 50 feet Sorry. There was a no disturb uh, from the 50 feet from the wall and then an additional 50 foot green buffer. Just wanted to point that out because I, I know that uh, looking at this, it looks like we could possibly add something there, but we in fact can't. Um, that's why we, we didn't look at adding parking spaces a little bit further away from the wetland okay. over on that side. Uh, along the other sides of the property we have residential buffers because the uh, residential zone line actually goes around the property here and stops this is industrial so we did look at other locations for these parking spaces for a parking lot expansion and this was the only one that we actually could fit in to this property um, moving it over to the proposed like Brianna said, we are proposing five spaces along the eastern side of the driveway, an additional um, three and two on, on the eastern side, and nine further down the throat of the driveway. The reason why we didn't connect these and add additional spaces over here is because there's an electrical box in between those spaces. So in, in order to put spaces there, we'd have to relocate electrical conduit and um, the electrical box so we didn't really want to get into that because that could um, cause more disturbance than than just what we were proposing here um, along the wetland buffer we have proposed to curb the edge of pavement uh, just to make sure all the the stormwater goes into the driveway and not towards the the wetland so all these spaces are sloped into the driveway. The driveway is crowned in the middle, so you have a gutter line on either side of the driveway. Uh, there are two existing catch basins, and all this area slopes to those catch basins. Uh, I don't believe those catch basins, we, we tried to look into them, and I don't believe those catch basins have oil water separators. So we have 
proposed to add uh, the oil and water separate, separator snouts on those two catch basins. Um, another thing we've done is down below, this drainage goes into the catch basins and then follows uh, the existing drainage line into a uh, grass swale. I'm just gonna, it's a little easier to see it on this. So, so go, to go back to the catch basins, are they going to be deep sump too? Didn't you propose that they be deep sump? Yeah, I believe they're deep sump already, oh, but okay. if they are not, then. part of the proposal. Just putting quits on, oil oh, gas up quits on. Correct. Okay. Sorry. Um, so, just to give, this is at a different scale so we can see the whole property. Uh, the catch basins are here. Drainage goes down into this grass swale that's along the um, eastern side of the property. The grass swale then goes into a, deten a wet detention basin over here, and that actually goes into, although it's not shown on the, this plan, if this was designed to be a treatment swale down here. Uh, what we're planning on doing, because this uh, predated the new stormwater regulations, the, the pretreatment required now is a little bit more than what was designed for at the time in 1996. So in order to add the pretreatment that's required by the state, we are converting uh, the section of uh, grass swale into a sediment four bay instead. And fortunately, there's enough capacity in that grass swale to have our water quality volume in that sediment, that section of the, the swale for a sediment four bay. So we are proposing to have a stone check dam to uh, close that off and let water go through it, but add a, a more of a dissipated and more of a, uh, a calmer um, rate so that we can, set, we can allow those sediments to settle. So with the oil water separator hoods and the uh, sediment four bays, we believe that we are providing the pretreatment that is required at this time. Um, as far as rates of runoff are concerned, we did not do a full blown out drainage report, a drainage analysis, a new drainage analysis of, analysis of this site for these spaces. Uh, we felt that we could use the existing drainage report um, which was in a very outdated uh, kind of analysis that we used to use, the TR-55. Um, now we use HydroCAD. So in order to convert that over, it would have been a, a great expense to our client. But we did take that data, which showed uh, that we had a decrease in rate of runoff from pre to post when this was originally designed in the 10-year and 100-year storm. So the amount of runoff that we're increasing by adding these 19 spaces is about, um, sorry, I don't have the numbers memorized, is about 0.2 in the 10 year and 0.2 in a 100 year. The rates of runoff that were um, decreased in the 10 and the 100 year was 1.8 and 5.2. So we felt that the original drainage analysis covered the 0.2 increase. Um, the other thing is the volume of runoff that goes to this. Uh, it equates to about an inch and a half in the 100 year storm raising the elevation in the water of the wet basin. So you're, look, you're talking about that much of a raise in that wet basin. Um, so we felt that that basin would be able to cover that as well. Um, the other portion of this NOI was the culvert repair. There is a culvert just to the north of the uh, catch basins, and that conveys water from, uh, it conveys water actually from off of our property. There's a drainage easement on our property for our butter, uh, and it does convey some of the water from the slope this slopes down and then there's a, a swale, an, an interceptor swale to convey the uh, water, water, runoff water um, that's not contaminated over to that culvert. 
The erosion problem, there's a little bit of erosion there, and it's not at the ends of the culvert, it's actually above the culvert. And we think what it is, is unfortunately, we can't determine what it, exactly it is without digging it up, and we're in the 50-foot no-build, so we want to make sure we have permission before we actually dig it up and see the actual, uh, what's actually causing the erosion. But what I think it might be is that the flared end section has separated from the pipe because it's right above where that junction sh uh, ought to be. So um, part of this NOI includes digging that section up of pipe, repairing it, and then bringing it back to where it was. Um, so that's, that's the extent of what that part of an NOI. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them, but I think that ends my presentation. Thank you. Jack, um, I'll just focus on the culvert. Um, it, it sounds like there's some uncertainty as to what will be needed to be done. So um, it sounded like you described a repair. Um, there may be a replacement involved if it's not what you think it is. There, there could be. There could be. Yeah. We're, so we're, I yep. just want to clarify what's proposed. Proposed is repair. Repair. Okay. And, and, and uh, to that point, Jack, Jen and I did speak briefly about that on the phone. The goal is to repair the culvert, but obviously to figure out what the problem is, we need a permit to do that. That's part of this order. If it turns into something more than that and a replacement, then, then we need to circle back with Jen and consult on the best way to to cover that additional work, but our goal is to is to repair it. There are some photos in the NOI. It shows the flared ends kind of separating. We're hopeful that's all it's going to be and nothing more than that, but that's the goal right now. Okay. Yeah. So you're planning ahead, and um, if anything does happen, you have a backup plan? We do, and Jen's already communicated to us how she'd like us to coordinate with her office if it turns into a repair, and we'll, we'll certainly do that. Okay. Yeah. So when you open it up, then you're going to find out whether it's a goal or a goal for the repair? Yeah, I think it would be pretty straightforward to, f to figure it out. It's just a matter of doing the work with a permit. Um, yeah. Thank you. Well, I understand your, your theory on land end separation. I mean, typically, turbulence undercutting, the one that's on the couch drops and breaks free at the, at the joint. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's that, it is an easy repair. And if it isn't, I'm, I am curious, because at that point it seems like you need to do a little more exploration and find out what it is. And when you, while you're doing that, you may have to fortify or somehow alter your, your erosion and sediment control, you know, in stream, in an active culvert, um, while it is you think about finding the problem, designing it, and then fixing it. So there could be some long drawn out period. It's, it's almost a, I don't want to use the phrase meatball surgery, but you're not going to really know what you're going to get into until you get into it and, and just have plenty of erosion control on, on, on site to be able to deal with that. And if it is a repair, Joe, just so there's nothing gets lost in um, translation here, we're not, we haven't given you a plan showing what that repair would look like. Obviously, be in kind, but, you know, you don't have a detail showing how we would do that work. We'd come back to Jen at that point and present what that repair plan would look like. That's our goal. Mm -hmm. But I, but I do subscribe to the theory that it, if it's, it probably is joint separation. If it's just a joint separation, where while well, they have the hole dug, it would be less just fix it. impact to, to just fix it. Yeah, so I, I would hope that we could do that. <laughs> um, you see where the spaces are going. Obviously, we're looking at this purely from a, from a wetlands perspective. Uh, I don't know what it does to zoning a site plan approval. Obviously, we're not acting on that. So whatever it is with regards to where the spaces are, we're not worrying about it. What I am curious, though, is is um, so we've added new spaces there, and some of those are, you know, at least the, the, where the nine are together and maybe these two over here. We've got resource areas relatively close, like snow storage. How do you, how do you pro any thought about proposing for, for, for winter maintenance in those areas? It's a good question. I wish I had a really good answer for you on the fly, Joe, but I don't. Um, I mean, we, you know, we. This is Jeff Port for the record. We manage the site depending on the snow. Obviously, they try to push it to the enemy. Part of the reason we're doing this is we tend to lose spots. Mm -hmm. 
because the snow backs up. And then if it gets, if we have a heavy winter, like a couple of years ago, at that point, we bring in usually a front end loader and we take it away to get it, to get it off site. So even with the nine spaces are, we're seeing really just one quadrant that's within the 50, near the 50, yeah. really nothing that's right up close to the 25. No, no, we're definitely we're well outside the 25. Um, the closest we get is the hay bales to install when we're doing the culvert repair work, which is right on the 25. So, you know, with all the efforts of, you know, pitching it all back for melt-off and even just regular rainstorms for the rest of the year, it finds its way to the catch basins, but, right. you know, Sanded and salted snow stuck piled up in those areas kind of defeats that purpose of draining back when it can drain right dirt into the wetland. So, I, as this thing evolves in discussion, we, we may be, I might be looking at maybe some snow um, signage. Snow. It says they're designated on the plan, but I don't I'm see I'm not that seeing they one on the plan. I don't yeah, yeah. It, The snow stockpile areas, it says they're designated. I think that's an oversight, Jen. I think, I don't, I wasn't, I don't recall seeing them on the drawing, but we could. We could certainly add those. Does it say snow stop out or snow Oh, it also says in accordance with the city of Haverhill, so. <laughs> so to be clear, we're moving all the snow to Haverhill. And we're going to start <laughs> okay, we're moving to the outside well, that's what we're proposing to do. Sorry. I trust that's acceptable to the commission. When you get your order in. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> it's, it says city of Haverhill. Maybe you can let the Haverhill come out of the line. <laughs> you're losing pride. I do the same thing. We, we write our orders and we take them from other yeah. orders. And, you know, Thank you for your indulgence on that. <laughs> So, right. so all kidding aside, I, I'm not a big fan of snow stockpile signs because that's in the first time that gets buried by that load of snow. In the areas where we find it to be sensitive, we I prefer to see one or two signs in those areas that say no snow stockpiling. You know, you know you don't push it up here. And if in the snow after a snowstorm, if I can no longer see that sign, it tells me well somebody obviously put something there. Understood. So I, I like to do it the other way around. But That's it, all it is in the management plan, so I think it should stay there, but I think you need to add the designated. And then we can decide if there's, I mean, the commission often will it's condition that no snow stockpiling <laughs> signs be placed where they should be. Is the concern the nine spaces out along, or is it the concern the, the spaces being added to the existing closer to the building? It would be the ones closest to the buffer zone, so the ones... There are some above and some below that abut the buffer zone. We don't want you to push snow off of those and into the 25. Or yeah, it's just the. Well, you, got these, you, got yeah. you, got you know, you know. As I look at it, it just. It's just the snow. You know, the area where the new nine are, one corner is more vulnerable than the opposite corner. Mm -hmm. So I see that you know, a conscientious guy might have a sign at one end that says. No snow stockpiling here, which means pile start there and plow with the opposite corner. Pile it all up here. Pile in mean, the opposite just, corner. So that I think, property. That thing is doable. And so I you're don't talking about, Joe, the northern end of that nine space, right? Is that what you're talking yes. about? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just keep pushing it's it this way. And the other areas don't seem to be anywhere near as vulnerable. Well, you wouldn't want to plow north on the uh, the new three or four up uh, there. Yeah. Yeah, right. Right, sorry. Right, you wouldn't want to plow those, to the wet one either. So maybe snow stockpiling signs at those two corners would be. There are a lot of obstacles there. I'm not sure where the hell you put the snow. Between transformers, signs. Trees. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure where you put the snow. Snow blowing. They may go to Haverhill, actually. Too. <laughs> <laughs> My concern um, with the, the nine spaces on the North Grove is um, the, uh, the stormwater treatment doesn't catch those the the new runoff the catch basins are above that yeah, it, does, it goes it slopes this way still it flows southerly yeah that's when actually, you're coming up the hill from flagship drive yeah look at the spot like grades it's, look at look at the gutter it's grades Jen top of the hill. it's still at the top, top of the hill 261 is where we're starting those spaces okay yeah, the, that's all breaking back to the yeah. basins. That whole gutter is flowing back to the basins. All nine? Yeah. yeah. Fortunately, we had really good spot shots in there. Okay. Because <laughs> I thought the the far corner, it looked like that would flow down the hill. I'm not going to lie. I can barely see that. 261. It's point that it does break just. It, I mean, it's pretty flat. It's 261 across the whole thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's actually not flat. It's it's a pretty good break. It's it's going to run. It's 261 at both ends, so you mean break toward the road and then back? 261.91. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the time. Point eight, then goes to 88, 64, then 290, 96. They're all coming back. Okay. Yeah, it's all going this way. Down into the catch basin. Mm -hmm. I'm all set. I'm all set. Do we need third party review? So am I. I don't think so. I don't think so. No, not what. Like I said, I thought, I thought the. When I first saw it, I can't, this bus is a microphone. I got, uh, I thought it was going downhill, but it's actually right. going the other way. Now, let's see, that just mm -hmm. the big thing. So, I think we are right there. Uh, the only question I have is, because like I said, I haven't got the, um, I can't see that well. The, um, what's the fill depth on East on, you said there's some filling being done on the, great on the top cool. three, and then on the bottom nine, correct? Correct. Yeah. Two locations. There's. Let's see. Right at this corner. There's about a foot of fill. Oh, just a foot. A foot of fill at that corner of the nine. Because we have a 261 here. Well, actually, the curve is going to be 261 and a half and a 260. So there's a foot and a half of fill at that corner. And you're going to slope. The, the pavement's at 261 and the curb is at 261 and a half. So the grass is at 261 and a half, but the pavement's at 261. And how about the northern, the more southerly one? Um, this one right here, this is about... Two feet? Not even. Another 259 there. And another, almost two feet. Two feet. Between one and two feet overall, Mr. Napoli. And then you're just going to slope down. With the five spaces, you're getting two feet away? It's under. So you have a, basically it's about 259. To 260. Yeah, 260. 60. 60. 8. Right, I see that. So it's 1.8 feet from the top of the curb. And you're going to slope down off the parking space. And that 246 was based on another parking space being here. So we probably have a little less than 240 or 246 square feet of disturbance. Okay. For All right. We don't have a number, so we need a motion to continue. So move. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank, Thank you, folks. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you in two weeks. one's going to be easy. Yes. 242-1629-4 West High Street uh, for the amendment. Planning. We're just waiting for revised plans. Huh? We're just waiting, We're just waiting for planning. So. No planning is done. So planning is done. So this just needs to close an issue. And I, you have the order of conditions in front of you to approve. You've yeah. gotten your planning board decision? Yes. So we're in good shape. So, so there's, any, we're not waiting for any questions. Anything. I'll take a motion. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That she, she don't want to talk anyways, right? No. All right. I have it tonight. <laughs> so you, this, did, this did look like it was never going to end this meeting, didn't it? It was, it was, it was, it was good from our vantage point. <laughs> They were just we, glad it wasn't yeah. them. I'll tell you, Doug, I thought we were going to have to dig our way out of that. <laughs> oh, man. man. That was getting bad. I'll, I'll use the cliche rolling the dice a couple times. You know, sometimes we get fired up. <laughs> sometimes we get worn out. So you're doing okay tonight. Yeah. So, so no, they'll no. prove that at the end of the meeting if you want to stay for that, but you don't have to. No. No. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for waiting. Sorry I had to wait that long, guys. Thank you. 
easement. That's going to continue. Pardon me? The Zero River View. Yeah. Uh, Jen and I agree. Is it more complicated than we thought, or is it? No. Language. All right. What are we talking about? Remember, we just, that's what we discussed at the last meeting? This is yeah. You weren't here, so I had to carry your pail. I had to. You carried my water? Yeah. Had a boy. Had the, a boy. Uh, <laughs> the, like this it. whole easement thing with the electric company was you not an easy thing. You can't. There were rights of overstepping other rights, and it just let them work it out. All so right. We'll get it done. Easements we'll get are it the done. most complicated. They're supposed to be simple. They're extremely complicated. Extremely. Move to continue okay. zero for review street. Uh, we'll always have to get paid for the discussions Second. of the All those, all those <laughs> Thanks, Jack. <laughs> Post 700 Middleton also continuing. He needs a little more stone. He did clean up and did some of the work, but Heidi had one more request and we didn't so hear moved. today. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion unanimous. 242-1609. CC request for 59 Bantam. Uh, we have the as built. Um, Heidi checked it out. Everything is as it should be and um, she recommends issuing a full and final COC. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Next unanimous. And next one is the enforcement order. Thank you. One Sorry, two. I had to wait. <laughs> Will I get it in the mail or something? Yeah, or you can pick it up. It's up to you how, how you, ever you'd like to do it. Okay, how long will it take for it? It'll be done tomorrow, so you could pick it up tomorrow, or we can stick it in the mail, and it'll probably I'll be there. Back tomorrow we'll get it. Okay, I'll have right. Donna give you a call. All right, thank you. Next one is uh, 250, enforcement order 255. Hey, Meno. So I think um, I wasn't here for this, what was a long drawn out, I think, discussion at the last meeting. And I think he's still somewhat balking at the expense of a um, wetland delineation. So I recommend you amend the enforcement order to require him to get that done by November 10th for the November 15th meeting or fines will issue. We had given him that courtesy warning at the meeting. Right, so now yeah. I think you just need to do that so and I'll send him a letter. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And that's unanimous. So you now won't. you're, um, we received, the town has a report it app that you can report violations. So those who like to do weekend work, you're never safe. Um, Bomb dropping. 83 Campbell Road and 203 Katuit were both called into us over a weekend, two weekends ago. Um, oh, actually, no, 203 Katuit, I'm sorry, Heidi saw while on another site inspection. 83 Campbell. There was another Campbell that Heidi sent a violation letter to because there was a much more minor infraction. But 83 Campbell um, was actually alteration of a backyard and loaming and seeding um, within the buffer zone. So they will be filing an after the fact notice of intent. I do, well, we need to confirm the EO and that required them to get a delineation and file an after the fact. I think it's approvable, it's just they didn't get the permit. So, okay. so what do you want? Um, confirm the EO as drafted. So Campbell? Yep. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nationality. 203 could to it. Um, same deal. We're just approving the EO. They need to get a delineation and then we'll make a recommendation as to filing. They may be in the 50. This was something Heidi had provided advice to the homeowner and they, someone did work anyway. So just confirming the EO and that they get a delineation. So moved. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, and that unanimous. Um, um, I promise not to drag it out, but I'm kind of curious about this throw your neighbor under the bus app we're talking about. Oh, reported is you can report anything. You can report um, construction debris on the highway. You can report um, a tree down in the road. You can report, I mean, you can. It's potholes. So it's not specific to report a violation. No, report. but there is a conservation area. And you could ask, like, a tree fell down in my backyard, can I cut it up? You could, I mean, it's just a way to okay. let the town know that something has happened and there's a list of options that you can So I know the from. intent was probably a healthy one to, to make it be right, proactive. But, and we even, like, if someone calls something in, we put it in to report it because it's a way of tracking it, too. Have we solved the problem? Did the people get an immediate response? That sort of thing. It's just a way to keep track of. It's, like it's kind of like the way it Yeah, originally it started as the pothole app, but it's ex yeah. it's extended yeah, into much more. Well, you know, we, we've we been going to a whole bunch of seminars lately mm -hmm. uh, ourselves in our town, and, uh, and, you know, I've coined, and I don't think I'm the first, but I've used a phrase, uh, referring to it as you know, anti-social media you know anybody with no backbone is, is out there just 
throwing all kinds of burden no, these, away. And almost these everyone. Are, so these are done discreetly. Handled you at can the staff report. Level, so I think the people the who reported level. Campbell just said, "There's, you know, I know I have a wetland, and there's a dump truck next to my house unloading a lot of fill." Like. I'm concerned kind of thing and you know just shouldn't someone check this out or you okay. know it could be we had a permit and we could call them up and say oh no they're doing the right thing but but, but I guess my point is it's done not like on social media where everybody can read that oh, it's no, done no. only at the staff it only level. comes to it comes to me and then I have to follow up on it okay okay yeah oh, yeah no this isn't you know neighbor shaming you know, or anything like that on my porch waiting for me to come home from work so I like this better. Okay. So I think we're we're good to adjourn and we can review the decision. Yeah, I, the decision I just, yep. It's not on here. I'm so, oh yeah. Oh right. That's on the agenda. Yeah, Sorry. we can't adjourn. Right. Okay, so we're gonna um, review the decision for two four two sixteen twenty nine. So this is an, um, an amendment, so I tried to highlight, um, I added a whole bunch of new documents, and we now have three, this has been amended twice, that's why this is amended dash two. So we now have three pages of documents to include everything. There are some things in yellow, or there should be. Um, I just note first that the bond is gonna cover all of this. They're not working outside of the original scope of what they proposed. They now have a stormwater management report that's called two different things, so I cite it as the two things it's called. One's the stormwater analysis and drainage report, and the other one is just the stormwater management report. The highlight didn't come out so much, so what, what, what paragraph do you want? I'm on 56. 56, okay, thank you. And then 60, there's an O&M report and an operation and maintenance plan, but we require in condition 61 that prior to certificate of compliance, and this was a recommendation of Lisa's, which I think you discussed at the last meeting when I wasn't here, the O&M report and the operation and maintenance plan shall be updated to be a comprehensive document covering best management practices for the entire site. So we'll issue this thing with the, with the new O&M, but in the end they need to submit us a whole document that is for so everything. Is a, so what's the trigger? When, when is it? Prior to COC. When they go to close out, they need to come to us with the combined document. Right now they have two documents. So we, we, we think the applicant's a conscientious applicant who's going to do things quickly and rapidly and want to close it off for, for whatever reason. But you know, what about some of these projects that never get a COC and they just work and work and work and theoretically they can be doing managing the site without an O&M plan? They have an O&M plan. They just have two of them right now. One covers the first phase of the development, and then this one covers the second phase of the development. The but first one's already recorded. But we identify c contradictions between the two. Well, one, no. Contradictions the conflicts. Well, there, Maybe. Were difference. there were differences because this amendment is primarily just a A new parking, parking lot. Um, whereas the other one, I don't know, they were gonna, they were gonna combine them into one. Right. That they have two now there is some overlapping area where um, exactly. one that. of the structures. My expectation is they were doing that. They were going to be presenting that to us before we closed. I thought. No, planning con conditioned it as well. And Lisa said that it should be conditioned. If you want to condition it to a, a different time. I just remember what we talked about the last meeting. You're right. I, I, we did talk about it. They were they were going to submit something to us. Today. Exactly for us to close. So you want me to say prior to the start of construction? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That, that that's much safer. Yeah, you're right, we did talk about okay, I wasn't there for that. Um, there was talk also of needing snow stock um, no snow stockpiling signs, but mm -hmm. those are already all, all along the pond. Are already we're already no, in the this order. this was in the area where they have the bioretention areas right. between the two parking the, the two parking areas. No. Okay, so no bioretention bio in the okay. bio. It's in the bioretention areas. They weren't going to stockpile. Okay. Well, this does say snow shall be stockpiled in location shown on the approved plan. Snow that exceeds the stockpile location shall properly disposed of in Haverhill. Oh, okay. Princeton. <laughs> Not Lawrence. <laughs> Haverhill. Snow. snow goes to stow. Okay. So, uh, with those amendments, I recommend. Motion. 
I move that we uh, approve DEP file number 2421629 amended dash 2. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Aye